Hi, in this video I want to show you how to do linear regression on your calculator and that's the process of fitting a line to a set of XY data. Sometimes that line is referred to as the regression line or the least squares line or the line of best fit. Now in this example I've got eight pairs of XY data and I've got three different tasks I want to show you how to do involving linear regression. The first thing I need to do is to put this data into my calculator. So I'm going to put the X data into list L1 and the Y data into list L2. So I'm going to go into the stat window and then press enter to get into the list view. And I'm going to start to enter my data points here. And you can pause the video now and do that on your own calculator. And let me just suggest uh, when you go to do that, if you have any old data remaining in your list, it's always best to clear the list out completely first. And you can do that using the clear list function here in the edit submenu. So I'm going to pause the video now and enter the data and then I'll come back. Okay, so I've got my data entered into the list. Again, the X data is in L1 and the Y data is in L2. So now let me show you how to run the linear regression. I'm going to go back to my stat window or stat menu and then over to the calc submenu. Item number four in this submenu is the linear regression operation and it returns a function in the form AX plus B. But before I do that, let me show you a couple of other things on this list. If I go down to item number 8, you're going to see it's also a linear regression operation. In fact, it's the same as number 4, it just swaps the definitions of A and B. And why they have two different versions of the same operation, I really couldn't tell you because they basically do the same thing. Item number 9 is not linear regression, but it looks like it. It's actually ln regression, and that's fitting the data to a natural log expression. So you can see in this submenu, you've got a number of different regressions that you can do. Um, cubic, quartic, uh, linear or natural log regression, or exponential regression. But we want to focus on fitting the data to a line. So that's linear regression. So I'm going to select item number four now, and that puts the linear regression function on my main window. Now when you run this operation, it takes a couple of inputs. It wants First, the list containing the X data, and in this case, or this example, that's going to be L1, comma, the list containing the Y data. And in this example, that'll be L2. Now, um, let me just mention here, linear regression will default to L1 and L2. So if you don't specify the list and you, you press enter without any list given, it's going to take the X data to be the values in L1 and the Y data to be the values in L2. So that's a bit of a shortcut there for you. Um, but I'm just going to specify the list here in case you're using lists other than L1 and L2. So now when I press enter, it runs the regression operation and it computes the least squares line giving you A, which is about 1.25, and B, which is about 12.98. So that's your regression equation. It also gives you R squared, which is your coefficient of determination, and R, which is your correlation coefficient. Now, when you go to run this on your own calculator, um, if you see A and B, but you don't see R squared and R, that means there's a setting on your calculator that we need to change. And let me show you very quickly how to do that. You want to go into the catalog menu, which is the shift function over the zero key. So I'm going to do second, and then catalog. And I want to jump down to the D's on this list. So I'm going to choose the alpha character D, which is over the X inverse key. Um, you can see it's already expecting an alpha character input, so I need only press the X inverse key. And that jump, jumps me down to the D's in this list. And then I arrow down a little bit further to get into or to get to the function diagnostic on, which is right after diagnostic off. So I press enter to put that on my main window and enter again to invoke that command. And once you change this setting, you're good to go. You, you don't have to keep going back and, and redoing it. So now when I run, or now when you run linear regression, after you've changed that setting, you should see all four outputs, A, B, R squared, and R. So that completes the first task I wanted to show you involving linear regression, and that's uh, how to find the equation, then also how to find the correlation coefficient and coefficient of determination. Now the next task I want to show you is how to make a scatter plot of the data and then to impose the least squares line on that plot. Um, we can do that uh, using the linear regression that we've just generated. Um, I'm going to change the command a little bit though. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go into stat and over to calc and I'm going to grab linear regression function and I'm going to again specify first the list containing the X data 
comma, the list containing the y data, comma again, and now I want to specify where I want the equation stored for the purpose of plotting it. And so I'm going to go into the vars key, and then over to the y vars submenu, and the first item's highlighted, so I'm going to press enter, and then enter again, and that's going to put this y1 location into my command. So my command looks like linear regression l1 comma l2 comma y1. And what that's going to do when I run this command is to run the regression again, and then it'll store this regression equation in the y equals menu in this location y1. Now to generate the scatter plot, I'm going to go into second stat plot. I'm going to go into my plot one. I'm going to press enter to turn it on. Uh, for type, I want to make sure scatter plot is highlighted, and that's the first choice here. And then give it the list for where my x data is stored and the list for my y data, and those are already indicated. Um, so I'm ready to plot now. So I'm going to go into zoom, and I'm going to arrow up to get to the bottom of the submenu. And I want to choose item number nine, zoom stat. And when I press enter, what that's going to do is it's going to generate a scatter plot of the data, and it's going to adjust the window parameters so that all of the data points are shown. And then you can see on top of that, we have the graph of the regression line that we stored in the y equals menu. Okay, so that's how you would do the second task involving linear regression, which is to generate a scatter plot and then to superimpose on that plot the graph of the least squares regression line. Okay, and again, stat plot is what generates the scatter plot, and the equation stored in this y equals menu is what generates the graph of the line. Now the last task I want to show you how to do is how to calculate values of y for given values of x. And what I want to do is to retrieve the equation I stored in y1. And how I'm going to do that is go into the vars menu and then over to the y vars submenu and again enter and enter again and that gives me my function y1 which is where the regression equation is stored. Now I want to specify the input which is the x value. So I give it parentheses 9.1, close parentheses. Okay, so that's the x value that I want this function evaluated at. And now when I press enter, it's going to put this x value into the equation and do the computation, and it returns a y value of 24.4. And so that's basically finding the y value along this least squares regression line at about 9.1. Okay, so that completes the third task for involving linear regression. And you can see you can allow you, this allows you to, by letting the calculator do all of the computational work, it allows you to focus on the results that you get. You can look at the data, you can see how well the line fits the data, and hopefully that will make sense uh, to you with what R is. Recall that the correlation coefficient tells you how well um, the line will fit the data. Uh, according to the sign and the magnitude. And since in this case R looks to be pretty close to 1, we know that the data uh, looks to be very linear in this situation. And of course that's kind of what the plot is showing us, right? It, it shows a definite linear trend. Uh, the fact that R is positive indicates that it's a positive trend upward. So again, let the calculator do the work for you. It's quicker, it's easier, and it's going to be more accurate than you're doing it by hand. Um, usually I caution students to do some calculations by hand, but in this particular situation, I think it's best to let the calculator do that work for you so that you can focus on making sense of the results. Okay, so that's all I wanted to show you for linear regression and linear modeling.